What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mine Tech and today we're going to be working on Piehole. So we're going to be doing something different with Piehole. I know in the past we've done videos, but today we're going to be adding on Unbound to Piehole. So if you're not familiar, I'll get into that, what Unbound is. But I'll show you really quick what we're going to be doing today. So this is my new Piehole instance that is running Unbound. You can see the queries are low and that's because this is my secondary DNS server. So that's why it only has 276 queries. But if I come over to the query log, we can see that Unbound is working because it's being sent to localhost 5335. And I'll explain this further in the video, but this is an instance of Piehole using Unbound, and I'm going to show you how to set this up right now. Now, I'm going to set this up in an LXC container in Proxmox. You can set this up however you want, whether it's on a Raspberry Pi, a VM, a container, however you want to do it. I'm going to do an LXC container because I feel it's the best option for me. It uses the least bit of resources, and it's the most efficient thing for me to use on my server. So I'm going to set up an LXC container really quick, and then we'll get right back into this. I've done a video on how to set Piehole up in an LXC container, but I'll do it one more time. So we're going to come over to... Actually, the first thing we're going to need to do is make sure that you have a ISO image on your Proxmox for container. So I believe this is my local. My local has my ISO images and templates. So we need to come over to CT Templates. And I already have my Ubuntu one, but if you don't, you can come over to down templates, and then I'm going to use Ubuntu again. Hey, type it right, and you can pick whatever flavor of Ubuntu you want. I'm going to use 2004, but you could use 2204, or you could use 2404, whichever one you want, or if you want Debian or anything else, you could use whatever distro you want. But I recommend it's one of the ones that Pihole supports. And if you're not familiar, I'll show you those real quick. And based on the documentation, these are the supported operating systems. So you have Raspberry Pi OS, Armbian, Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, and CentOS. Again, you could try using whatever operating system you want, but I recommend using the ones that are supported, at least if you do run into an issue. You can get support from support. I know it's funny to say it that way, but let's get back into the setup. So now that I have my container, I can come over and create container, and instead of using the create VM button, I'll show you again, we're not going to be using create VM, we're creating CT, and we're going to click on create CT, we'll call it, I'm going to call it something different, but you can call it whatever you want, and then over here we're going to set the password, so this will actually be the password to access the container, so make sure you remember it, and we'll click next, and then we're going to select our template that we picked out. Now, I'm going to give my machine 10 gigs. It's recommended from Piehole to give it 8. I like to give it a little extra just in case. G uh, CPU, I'm going to still give it 1 core. And memory, I'm going to give it 1 gig. It only says it needs uh, 512 megabytes, but I like to give it a little bit extra. Other than that, everything looks good. I am going to set this to DHCP so it does pull an address. And I'm going to leave IPv6 the same because I don't use IPv6 in my network. Click next. DNS is fine. It's going to use my gateway settings, which is good. And then I'll click next again. And we'll hit finish. It's going to build up the container really quick. And then we'll go through the initial setup. I'm going to do the update. And then we'll set up Piehole. If you're not familiar with containers, you haven't worked with them before, the default login will be root. And then it's going to be whatever you set the password to. And sometimes it's funny and doesn't like to take the password. So you just try again. And it looks like it's going to be funny with me. If you're having this issue, there's really no way to reset the password. So you might just have to blow out the container and start again. So I'll try again, and if anything, I'll make a new container. Luckily, the great thing about using containers is to blow them out and start over. It takes a couple minutes versus doing a whole fresh VM. It could take 25 to a half an hour. So I'm just going to update the machine, and then we're going to do the Piehole install. And I know somebody's going to ask why I'm using Ubuntu 2004. Really just because I grabbed it. Uh, I think I meant to grab a 2204, but I grabbed 2004. It works. It's fine. This is my secondary pile of container, and I believe my other one's using 2204. So it's not really a big deal. It's a working distro. I'll convert it when I'm ready. Um, but yeah. So I know, I know I'll probably get a question on it, so I just wanted to address that now. Okay, my updates are done, and one last thing we're going to do is we're going to install curl. I think this is it. There we go. We're going to need curl for the pile install, so I'm just going to get it done now. Another thing is, you could set up SSH for this box. Personally, I don't, 
on my containers. I just go in, it's easier to go through the console. Uh, they've actually either updated the Proxmox console that you can paste into it now, but it's much simpler. So I'm just going to use the console. If you want to set up SSH, you can. I'm not going to. So now we're going to go over to Pi-hole. Actually, let's talk about Unbound first. So if you're not familiar, Unbound pretty much just makes it a recursive DNS cacher uh, resolver. So I have this article over here. I'll put a link to this. And we also have what Pi-hole actually says about it. So pretty much instead of going back constantly to these other upstream DNS resolvers, you're going to cache your own DNS and then you're going to resolve back to that. So pretty much you're the authoritative DNS server in a sense. So pretty much you always know you're going to be getting the proper DNS and it's always going to be stripped of ads and anything else malicious. I'll put these in there uh, so you guys can read about it if you want. I really like to focus on how to do the, you know, the how-to. So we're going to focus on that and you guys can read through this if you want. We are, however, going to be using these guides. So I'm going to split up my screen and let's see. Oh, it's just not being very cooperative. I'm going to get these set up and then we'll start the install. Anyway, so I have my pile on the right. This is the new instance that we're working on. And here's the documentation. So they have a one step install script that we're going to use. And you can see it's working by getting the pile logo. So we're going to run through the install really quick. I've done videos of this in the past. It's super simple. So we'll just do it again. This is going to start working. It's going to check the system. And then from there, it's going to start asking us questions. So it's going to tell us it's going to be a DNS blocker. We're going to say yes. It's free, but if you want to donate, we're going to click OK. You should have a stack address set for this box. If you don't, you might want to go into your router or your firewall or the machine set a stack address. If you didn't do it already, you could always do it afterwards. Just make sure it gets done so your DNS server IP doesn't change. Because if it does, then you're going to lose DNS and it's going to be very tricky. Right now, we're going to select whatever DNS provider we want. It doesn't really matter because this is going to change, so I'll just stick with Google. It's going to use third-party lists in order to block sites. That's fine. Right now, it's just going to give us the default list, so we're going to click yes. We do want the admin interface because it's going to be very useful. Uh, the web server is important as well, so we're going to do that. We do want query logging, so we can actually look through our, our logs and see what's going on. This is very helpful if you're trying to determine if something's being blocked or not. And we're going to have it so it shows everything because it's only me using it, so it doesn't matter. It's going to do some more uh, stuff on the back end, and then it should be done pretty much in a minute. It's pretty much it for the uh, how-to over here. So I'm going to pull up the Unbound documentation, and we're going to install that as well right now. Uh, jumping back over here from the installer, you can see that it says that it's all set, and it's going to give us the login, the URL, and the password. So... Make sure you get this really quick, and then I'm just going to come over here, and we're going to do HTTPS colon slash slash 192.168.50.199, and make sure you put slash uh, admin at the end, or it's not going to arrange to the page. Uh, oh, because it's HTTP. There you go. So now you're at your pihole admin, and you can do the password over there. Um, I'm going to log in really quick and then we'll show you to change the password to make it easier. So you can see we were able to get into the pile admin, but I'm going to change the password really quick because I like to use my passwords. So for that, we're going to use sudo pihole tac a tac p, and then you can enter your new password. And it's going to have you confirm your new password. And then you can say it's all set. So I'm going to log out really quick and then we're going to log back in with a new password. And that worked. So we're all set. Now we're going to get into installing Pi, uh, Unbound. So I do have the Unbound documentation up. I do recommend that you have it up as well because you are going to be having to copy some stuff over. So we scroll down. The first thing we're going to have to do is sudo apt install Unbound. And it's going to go through, ask you for yes. And that's going to install Unbound. It does have an optional. It does have an optional step to do a hint file. I don't do that, so I'm not going to have that set. But the next thing we are going to need to do is have this config file. So we are going to use this config file because it does need to be set for Unbound to work properly. So I do recommend having the documentation up so you can copy it. We are just going to use the default file they give us. So the next thing we're going to do is going to come over here and 
we're going to copy this command. We are going to write the file to set the directory, uh, the config. So we're just going to do sudo nano, and then I'm going to paste in that directory it wants us to write. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to grab the whole config file. And we're going to paste that in here. And all that is all good. And I use now, so it's going to be control X, and then it's going to be Y and enter. If you're using Vi, it would be escape colon WQ or whatever else you're going to be using. I'm going to hit clear. So now that should be all set. We can copy this really quick and we can restart the service and check it. And we could do a quick dig and you can check that. And it should be good. It looks good to me. One thing to keep in mind is we still didn't change the Pi-hole configuration, so it's still going to be using the actual Google servers. So some of the stuff might still be off, but we're going to fix that going forward, so don't worry. So we're actually going to go into Pi-hole now and set that up. Now we are in our Pi-hole config. This is the admin portal, and we're going to come over to settings, DNS, and we're going to uncheck Google. We're going to come over here and we're going to do custom one. It's going to be 127.0.0.1, and it's going to be pound or hashtag 5335. Uh, That's going to be using 5335 because DNS is already listening on 53 in the container. So it's going to be using a separate port to listen so it can actually function. And if we scroll down, it actually goes over this and it shows it in the documentation. So make sure you remember to scroll down and click save, or it won't save your config. Uh, click save again and we come over to the dashboard it should be all set so i'll just come back over to settings again we can confirm and it looks good to me now i don't have any machines using it so i'm going to change my dns really quick and then we'll come back before before we keep jumping around one thing to keep in mind if i said you could use whatever os you want if you're going to be using debian you might need to come over here and disable the resolve.conf has the documentation for this and then use debian so i'm not going to go over this but if you are, make sure you read through this and set this up if your machine qualifies for these options. Pi-hole with Unbound is all set up. The last thing to do is actually set a machine to use it. So I'm just going to open up my network settings really quick. And I'm going to change it so I use the Pi-hole of Unbound. They make Windows so much more difficult now to change settings. But here we go, now I can change my DNS. So I'm going to change this, and I believe it was 192.168.50.199. I could be wrong. That was right. So we'll set that. We'll hit OK. We'll hit Close. And now we'll go back to the internet. And we can see we're starting to actually get queries in. And if I come to MSN, a site that is riddled with ads, we can see that pretty much all the ads are gone. And you can see there's lots of white space where originally there was ads. There would be something over here, it looks like. And if we come back to Pile, we're going to see there's 35 queries. So the queries are going up, and now we can test to actually see Unbound is working. We're going to come over here to Query Log. And in here, we can see what's working. So you see Gravity is blocking ads, which is good. Gravity is the system that uses the ad list to block the ads DNSs. Um, but we can see over here, it's answering DNS queries with localhost 5335. That is our recursive DNS server coming back and answering these DNS queries from my workstation to find out who's who in a, an authoritative way. So we're no longer reaching out to all these other upstream DNSs that are being whatever, you know, whether they're trying to fill ads in for their own stuff, whatever it is, we're only answering off ourselves. So you can see it's definitely working and I'll come over to Yahoo. It's another one that's full of ads and you could see that pretty much everything is gone so that's how we use unbound to block ads with pie hole if we come back we can see queries are jumping back up so it is working it looks good another one before i get a question in the comments can pie hole block youtube ads no uh, i've looked into it for a while it doesn't appear there's any straightforward way to block youtube ads with pie hole you're better off getting a youtube premium subscription it's like 10 bucks it supports the creators and it makes you get uh, no ads and it gives you a premium video streaming so just spend the extra money and get premium if you want to block the youtube ads it's so much easier and pie hole won't do it so don't worry you don't have to comment on it and ask 
But that's how we set up Piehole Unbound. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It's a simple one. We might do some more Piehole stuff in the future. There's a couple other sentences of Piehole that I, I've been starting to use and I like to show off. Hope you guys learn some new stuff. If you guys could like, comment, and subscribe, it helps the channel grow and the videos get shared more. I'll have links below to all the equipment that I use in my home lab. It's all Amazon links if you want to check any of those out. I'll have a link to my Discord server if you want to join up in there. We can chat about projects or help each other with any questions we have. And I appreciate everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next video.